So for today's practice, if you start on your back, where we normally end the practice, in Shavasana, or corpse pose. If you're working with other people, extend your feet into the center, finding your long lines in your body. Lengthen your heels away from your head, aligning your ankles with your hips and shoulders. If you have any issues with your low back, you can bend your knees and drop them in towards each other to release the low back. We're tuning into Ujjayi Pranayam and into the movement of that ocean-sounding breath in the body, which hopefully you've been practicing over the weeks and doing this either before you go to sleep or when you wake up. It's much easier to focus on the subtle realm of the breath when you don't have to hold yourself up. So letting your feet relax, your shoulders release, your eyes close, so you can turn your attention inside. Releasing any tension in your face so your jaw is relaxed. And yet narrowing the throat just slightly. And hopefully by now, after these weeks of practicing Ujjayi Pranayam and learning how to narrow the throat to create that ocean sound, it no longer feels like work or effort. With practice, it becomes more automatic and easier. So as you narrow the throat, you create a longer breath. It takes longer for the breath to come in and go out through that narrower passage. With your hand resting on your belly, feel that the inhale fills the belly into your hand, and the exhale, the belly relaxes back towards your spine. And feel with your hand and hear with your ears the pace of your breathing. Refining the breath, if it sounds ragged at all, or if it's uneven between the inhale and the exhale, one side of the breath is longer, then give that shorter side a bit more focus. Extend it out without strain, without pushing or pulling. And as you get the breath dropping into the belly and the low back, see if you can feel how the pelvis responds to the breath. If there's any sense of breathing that far down into your pelvic floor, into your hips, one of the areas we're going to focus on today. Keeping that focus, that first part of the breath in the belly and the low back, as you bring one hand to each side of the ribs, using both of your hands now to feel your ribs. So if you're a woman, you're just under your bra line. And letting your elbows walk out wide so your palms can lay flat on your rib cage. Continuing to breathe into the belly and the low back, and as you inhale and fill, feel the ribs expand with the breath. And then as you exhale, feel the ribs drop back and then let the belly release. So in this three-part breath, the belly is the first to expand and the last to release. A little bit of focus there, keeping the belly open. Even though your hands are on the front, sense how your ribs open through the side body and into the back. So your back expands down into the ground. And your hands are not over the entire rib cage. So see if you can feel that you have low ribs and you have ribs that go all the way up. And the next area we're going to move into is up towards the uppermost ribs, into the collarbones and the neck. If you want, you can bring a hand up to that area and feel how your breath moves in that area too. So you're creating space here from the inside out, as though you're being filled from the pelvic floor upwards on the inhale, and then releasing from the neck back down towards the pelvic floor on the exhale.
This is a very meditative practice. This is a good place to focus and center yourself, and also a good way to release yourself into sleep after a long day. However, we're going to stay awake and move on from here and add movements to the breath. So this next time that you exhale, walk your legs up off the ground and hold onto your shins or the back of your thighs, whichever is an easier reach for you. And draw your legs in so your feet are off the ground. You're tucking into a small ball shape. Keep your shoulder blades underneath you, back of your neck long, so you have a good broad base in your back. And then continue that three-part breathing. Continue to breathe down into your pelvic floor, hips, belly, low back, ribs, chest, upper back. And as you exhale, draw your legs down. Tuck in a little bit smaller. Like the pressing down, the draw of your arms is helping to press the air out. And then hold, however small you get to, whatever small tuck shape you get into, hold that with the strength of your arms as you inhale. So this posture, this tucked ball shape, translates from the Sanskrit to mean wind-liberating posture because you're stimulating your digestion. You're massaging your internal organs with your breath and with the compression of your thighs into your belly. So see if you can also feel, aside from that massage of your internal organs, your back opening. With the pressure on the front, the breath ends up going a little bit more into the back and up towards the collarbones and the neck. So you might feel a stretch from the inside out with the full breath in there. We're going to move from this press pose and extend outwards. So interlace your fingers and turn your hands inside out as you stretch your arms above your head. Let your legs just hang out where they are for the moment. And as you turn your hands inside out, if your shoulders are open, otherwise keep them as they are, your little fingers will come close to the ground, reaching through the heels of your hands, and then reach up through the heels of your feet, stretching them towards the ceiling, towards the sky. Draw your toes down towards you. Inhale into that L shape, and then exhale and come back into your tucked, pressed ball shape. So you're bringing your hands to your shins if possible. Keep your fingers interlaced if you can. That gives you a good, easy movement. Inhale, stretch up into an L shape, and exhale, and tuck back down. So you're moving at your pace of breathing, using the inhale to create the motion through the body, inhaling as you make a big L shape, stretching through the backs of your legs and your shoulders, and then exhale as you draw your thighs down. So you can really feel how the drawing of the thighs down presses the air out, keeping your back as your platform, your foundation, so your sacrum, your shoulders, your head resting on the ground, stretching up from there and tucking back into there. Hearing your breath in your throat. So this next time that you take your legs up into the air, keep them in the air and together, and bring your arms down by your sides. So your hands are right next to your hips, and push the ground away with your hands so your low back tucks into the ground. You feel more supported through the low back. And then we're going to change the breath, so you exhale through your mouth. Let your belly expand as you inhale through your nose, and then contract your abdominal muscles down into your back into the floor as you exhale through your mouth. And if you're not sure what's happening with your belly, bring one of your hands there to feel it. Know that your abdominal muscles drop down as you exhale out. So we've done water wheel in the past. We're going to do that here. This next time that you exhale and you tuck your belly down, take your legs away from your head, keeping them together, and just go as far as your belly doesn't lift, your back doesn't arch, and when you get to that farthest point, bend your knees and draw your legs back in, your thighs towards your belly. Inhale and then lengthen your legs up so your knees are above your hips. Exhale. And extend your legs out. 
The slower your breath here, the more control you have over the breath and also the more strength you're building in your core. Be really honest about how far your legs go. Only take them to the point that it doesn't pull your belly up or your back off the ground. So you're dropping your belly down as you take your legs out. Absolutely uninteresting how far your legs go at this stage. Much more about how you can use your core to move your legs. So doing three more of these, inhaling, extending up, legs as long as they can go without struggle, without strain, exhale, extend your legs out to your farthest point, and then when you get there, bend your knees to release any tension in the low back. So as you come back in and up, starting long inhale, exhale, extend out, and when you release on your last one, bring your legs back up long. So they're in the air, extending your feet up towards the sky. And look at your feet and look at them to see that they look like they're standing on a ceiling. So you're drawing your toes down. Bring the four corners of your feet square. Big toe, little toe, inner heel, outer heel. And then whatever bend that you need in your knees so you're not struggling and you feel your low back is supported, bring your arms up parallel to your legs, palms facing each other, but your shoulder blades underneath you. Dead bug dead bug pose. So finding the broadness of your back and breathing into that, inhale, expand your back with your breath, and then exhale, think of extending the breath up through your arms and your legs, finding a little bit more length in your legs with each exhale, using the foundation of the back on the ground to stretch up from, aiming the heels of the feet up. The legs are usually the more challenging part to lengthen. Arms are easy. Just keep the shoulder blades underneath you so you don't disintegrate. Dead bug pose looks really simple from the outside, but you can feel how you're using your core and how you're finding strength and length in your legs with this. So we've gone back to Ujjayi Pranayam, breathing in and out through the nose, hearing the breath in the throat. And to release out anything in your legs, we're going to go from dead bug to last dance of the dying bug. So let your arms and legs shake out so they're really loose, keeping your back as your foundation on the ground, and laugh as big as you can. <laughs> Good, all right. Draw your knees back in and hold on to your shins or the backs of your thighs. And notice how you feel. Notice your breath coming back into your breathing. We're adding a sense of humor into this level of practice. Recognizing that laughter can be a choice and it can be a particularly difficult choice to make if you're not feeling like laughing. So initially you might have to fake it. But then notice, even if you fake it, how you feel afterwards. It will release endorphins, feel-good hormones that help lighten your mood. So as you can reconnect now with a slower breath and rock and roll along the length of your spine, if that works for your spine. If not, just rock side to side or circle your knees to massage your low back. If you're working along the length of your spine, use your abdominal strength that hopefully you woke up with some of those previous exercises to create the motion so that you're determining the pace and the pressure of your spine along the ground with the strength of your core. Go just to your shoulders so you don't put pressure on your neck. So going from your shoulders and then to your sacrum. And when you get to your sacrum, your sits bones, see if you can keep your feet off the ground. So there's a little bit of balancing work involved like we did with upward facing boat last level. And then connect the breath in if you've lost it so that you're inhaling one way, exhaling the other. I tend to inhale up, exhale down, but it might work better for you to go the other way. Using your core more than your shoulders, more than your jaw, so you're not lifting yourself up with your neck or your chin. 
Finding how you can place your spine on the floor and then lift your spine off the floor. And when you come up this next time, bring yourself to sit tall so that we can tune in with Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Finding your seat, the length of your spine, and then bring your palms together at your heart in Atmanjali Mudra, which is a symbol of connecting into your higher self, however you understand that at this point in your journey. Once you're upright and you're sitting still and tall, reconnect with your breath. See if you can feel what we were doing when you were relaxed on your back before, a breathing from your pelvic floor upwards on the inhale, emptying from the neck downwards on the exhale. So we're tuning into the wisdom within and without with Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. If you're joining in with your voice, breathe in for the first of three. As you inhale, lift your arms up, stretch tall, and then as you exhale, reach them back behind you, opening across your chest. Releasing your arms down, let your eyes open if they were closed, and take this moment to check in with yourself. How are you now? Do you feel any different than you did when you first came onto the mat, into the practice, before we did those few exercises of breathing and connecting to the core, to the center? Do you have any awarenesses in your body today? Any tight spots or sore areas? And looking back on the time between when you last came to the mat and now, if you've been practicing regularly, did you have any time or make any time for yourself to re repeat that last round of practice? So we're going to finish with the toe sit. Get the toes and the wrists open. Bring yourself up onto your knees with your toes curled under, helping your little toes if they need some help, and finding where your heels are under your sits bones, your butt cheeks, so that you're not sitting between your heels but right on them, or adjust and be on your knees or have a block under your knees if this is too intense on your toes. Then bring the backs of your hands right alongside your ribs, so if you're a woman, you're right along the bra line, with your fingers mostly behind you, so that'll bring your elbows forward coming into chicken pose, which is not an official traditional posture, but one that I made up to find the extremities opening. And that might give you enough of a stretch through your wrists, just breathing into your ribs, into the backs of your hands there. If you want to deepen that stretch in the backs of your wrists, take your elbows and your shoulders down towards the ground, and then see if you can inhale into that. So if that's a little bit too much to take a full breath into, to widen your rib cage out sideways, then soften the pressure down of your elbows. Next time that you exhale, bring your hands out in front and hold on to the fingers and the thumb of the right hand with the fingers of the left as you tuck that right elbow in next to your body, shoulders on your back, and drawing your fingers and thumb back to get the underside of your wrist stretched open. And then breathe as though you're breathing into your toes and into your right wrist, as though the breath could actually connect with what you're doing. Use your next exhale to switch hands, catching the thumb as well as all of the fingers on that left hand. Relax your elbow in by your ribs, shoulders on your back. And as you exhale, release and shake your hands out. Uncurl your toes. 
Press your way back into child pose, pressing the front of your ankles and shins down into the ground, using your hands to help you tuck back and finding a place where you can rest for a few moments. So you might want your hands in front to help you push the ground away, press your hips back over your heels. Or you might want to rest your head on your hands or your fists if your head doesn't reach the ground. Or taking your knees wider may help release your head to the floor. Or you may want to rest your hands back by your feet. So once you have a resting place, let go of your breath and let go of your body. Let it settle. Let gravity pull it down towards the ground. Notice the few things that you've done and how you're feeling. And with that awareness in yourself, your awareness of the tools that you have of centering into your body and breathing and connecting to the ground, begin to breathe deeper again coming out of this resting pose starting with the breath feeling how your back ribs expand your back opens with the front body pressed against the thighs and let your next inhale uncurl you bring you up use the lift of the in breath to come upright, lengthen your arms out to the sides, up overhead as you breathe in, and then as you exhale, bring your palms together down along your midline and acknowledge yourself for showing up on the mat, for breathing and being present with yourself. Namaste. Namaste.